Hi guys, and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the process of creating this piece with acrylic wash. I'm starting off here in the left corner of the video, showing you how I came up with my sketch and the reworking and color comping of that. While on the main screen, I'm currently laying in the first layer of really diluted acrylic wash. For this, I'm using Liquitex Basics acrylic paint, a bunch of different uh, just recycled cups that I have, like the ones that you get uh, from like hotels and Dunkin' Donuts with styrofoam. I reuse those for painting and then just cover them with saran wrap. And basically I'm just going over with really diluted acrylic paint with lots of water and working on the figure in the painting. I'd never worked with this process before and I was really nervous for it. And at this point it was very similar to watercolor except it dried almost instantly. So keeping the leading edge wet was really kind of difficult. Um, I was really excited about this process though because one of the things that I have learned to work with with watercolor over the years is the fact that once it's dry, sometimes when you do stuff on top of it, it starts to lift and you can only get it so dark, which is why I tend to use mixed media. And I heard about this process and decided to give that a try and see if this was something that would really help me kind of bring my work to the next level of finish. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this is actually the first piece that I worked on in 2021, and I think it's a great way to start off the year. Um, I did start it in 2020, but this was like the first finished piece I made, which it felt good starting off the new year on a good note. And sorry, it does jump a little bit right there. I did the background lay in uh, with some thicker acrylic paints and just layer that up because my camera died and you know how that is. At this point, I wasn't really sure if the painting was going to continue, which is why I also wasn't filming during that section. Um, unlike watercolor, which tends to look pretty good throughout just because it's, you know, pastel at the beginning and then you're just upping the saturation. There's no point where it really looks ugly. If you've heard of like the ugly painting stage or the, um, there's a few, there's a few different names for it, but you get what I'm saying. This definitely had that and it happened twice, which doesn't normally happen at all because of like the limited contrast and the figure was just so pale and the contrast was all out of whack and the colors were off based on my color comp that I was referencing that you guys saw me make. But I decided to go back in, keep filming, charge my camera overnight, came back to it. And so this is where we ended up. Basically, now I'm just tweaking things and continuing to add depth with various glazes and washes over the figure that I'd already painted and working with the bushes. I don't know about you, but for me, I had already drawn the bushes uh, in my sketch, very detailed, and didn't really consider the fact that acrylic is a opaque medium to an extent. I mean, I'm doing the washes, so you can kind of see through it in certain areas, but like the figure is mostly pink tones, so you can still kind of see my pink sketch pretty well, because I transferred it with a cauli erase pencil, my rose one that I love, and you could kind of see through on the bushes, but I realized if I'm going to paint them in the kind of intuitive way like this, what I'm going in right now, doing the shading first and building up the highlights from there with an the opaque color, I'm not gonna be able to see the sketch anymore. So I did end up doing just the lost and found sort of building that you have to do with acrylics, which I was hoping I wouldn't have to do in this piece too much. That was the kind of point of doing wash style rather than opaque style acrylics. But in the end, I'm really happy with how the bushes turned out. Um, and that is actually one of my art resolutions for 2021 is to draw better bushes because I feel like they deserve a little more respect. And that started with this piece. Um, you'll see me actually go back in and do the flowers that were featured in the color comp. And I feel like it really adds to the piece. Um, like, you know, I took a composition class this summer. And so this piece was actually based around the golden spiral. And working through the colors through the whole piece was also really important to me. Um, obviously, the iPad gave a lot more saturation than I was able to build up quickly with the acrylics just because I was doing glazes. And so we only really reached the level of saturation in the color comp at the very end. So it was another sort of disconnect between the digital media and the acrylics just based on the process because you're not really going to get that finished level of color like you would uh, in a mixed media Copic piece just because the Copics basically have all the saturation built in, right? I get to see that finished result a lot sooner. So I think 
one of the most important things that I learned this year, this past year, was that I need to have a good color comp and knowledge of my composition to be able to make a piece that really hits home in all the areas I want it to. As fun as working intuitively is for like a portrait or something where the composition is pretty much standard and you're facing forward and there's more work to be done in the character design rather than the actual composition of the piece, it's important to do that if I'm trying to do something like this where I actually want the composition to flow. I also wanted to really make sure the background worked. I didn't intend on reworking it as much as I did, but it matched the composition sketch here much better after reworking it, and I am incredibly happy with how it turned out. Now on to my literal favorite part of this whole process, which was the detailing. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know there's always a stage in the piece where I get to go in and use all sorts of mixed media to make things the way I want them to within the last 30% of the piece. And oh boy, oh golly gee, it was especially wonderful on this piece because I was basically doing the whole line art. I was adding that last touch of contrast to this piece that I hadn't done in the acrylics. And it was very fun. And I have to say one of my favorite parts was the fact that I had my sketch here. Um, you can see another one in the background actually because I printed it wrong the first time. I forgot to scale up my uh, PDF. But uh, I had that line art to already go off of, which I didn't plan on my sketch being my line art just because you know the color comp is just kind of how it is but i i liked the way certain lines were thick and where i placed emphasis on like the lining of the eyes so it was really handy to have that true to size printout for me to be able to refer to you can't see it here but my ipad's also there and i'll tap it a few times because i'm also referring to how the line art interacts with the colors based on the color comp version Voisin, voisine, désolé si je trouble votre tranquillité. Quand je passe parmi vos maisons, pardonnez-moi cette intrusion. Le terrain était vague sans vous, et puis je vous ai vu débarquer, immobilisé dans la boue, vos caravanes bigarrées, affairées du matin au soir. Vous ne levez jamais la tête quand j'entre sur. J'essaie de me faire discrète Qui êtes-vous, voisin, voisine Chaque jour je passe, j'ai né, je trace Je n'ose pas vous faire signe Et pourtant j'aimerais au moins savoir D'où vous venez Sans dire au revoir Voisin, voisine, j'avoue que parfois D'être si timide, je me sens comme J'espère juste que vous ne prenez pas Pour une voyeuse ou une espionne Puisque vous êtes sur le chemin Que je prends matin et soir Je n'arrive pas, comme font certains à vous éviter du regard Que se passe-t-il Voisin, voisine, nos yeux saluent, on se salue, attendez-vous seulement un signe, juste un sourire et déjà je repars, mais cet arrêt laisse espérer un peu plus qu'un bonjour sans au revoir. Je pense à vous en voyant les traces de roue Seul vestige de votre passage Comme la lettre d'un message Qu'est-ce qui a pu vous faire prendre la fuite En pleine nuit à la va-vite Pour que vous ne preniez même pas la peine De préparer votre sortie de scène Où êtes-vous Voisin, voisine Léger d'eau pas
Now I'm just adding the final details using those Prismacolor pencils and making sure to keep those sharp the whole time just so I get a really consistent line thickness on her. And then, based on that same color comp, I'm going to go in and add the next element of contrast, which is the white line that is around her to kind of show a glow and separate her from the background a bit more. I tried really hard to keep the figure separate from the background when I was painting and to not go over it all, but I did in a couple places, and adding in the white line that I had planned for in the beginning really kind of made sure that her silhouette stayed true to the way it was designed. Speaking of silhouette design, one of the other things I want to work on more this year is integrating different shape language into the way I draw um, hair and like organic shapes. Um, specifically speaking about the hair in this piece and just um, the way the body is drawn. Uh, I realized in a lot of my pieces, I do the same angle of curve in a lot of the hair. Uh, I, I don't know if that's something that'll make sense if you are not an artist yourself, but I assume most of you are. Um, basically just like the proportion of shapes I'm doing in curls and stuff, I realize that I repeat a lot, which I get is a part of your style and how that sort of thing evolves. But I want to work more with more organic shapes, kind of based on like jellyfish and like the way water moves and stuff. I feel like it's very organic and adds a lot of visual dictionary to a piece as far as shape language goes, because if you're repeating a lot of like the same shapes and like percentage of curve in a lot of the elements of a painting, I feel that it tends to just feel repetitive, even if it's about very different things. Like if you had a pear and an orange, but they're kind of they're kind of drawn similarly. I mean I guess that's not a great example of fruit. They have a set design. But like if you were drawing a skirt and all the folds kind of seem to curve in the same way, it could look a lot more organic if you had a wider variety of shapes in there. Now I'm going in and using a few different Prismacolor Premier pencils rather than the Call Erase ones and doing some detailing in conjunction with the uh, Call Erase ones just for the different colors that I didn't have. But uh, in my sketch, I was very excited to add in the highlights and stuff and I decided not to use the Prismacolor Rose pencil for this. And I will tell you why. Basically, my thought was, a lot of that rose is already built up underneath and I got the pink shades that I'm using in the figure here and in the roses as close to that rose color as I could. And I felt that the character would have more dimension in her coloring if I specifically only used the colors that were not rose. Almost kind of like when you've got um, like a film on your window or uh, like a crystal and it sprouts a rainbow, right? I wanted to give that sort of effect to her where it's almost like she's got a duochrome look. I'm using the orange pencil here to try and do the most saturated areas. And I have the pink color to do in the secondary kind of saturated areas and blending out with the lighter areas of highlight. And then I'm using the cream color for highlights as well as white just to make the edges really pop. But I wanted to make sure that there was some variety. And this is one of the things that I was really happy I planned out the color comp because one of the things I am notorious for is having crappy thumbnails and really rushed color comps. Like the colors are there, but I don't spend any time blending them or anything like that. And having a color comp where I had already gone through and done all of my blending on like the arms and like the torso and knew where the gradations of color had to stop for it to look right was so incredibly useful. It, I didn't even really plan on doing a detailed color comp. I just had the sketch on Procreate and was working on it one night and I really liked the way it turned out. Um, I just like wanted to color my sketch. And I think I will definitely do this more this year. I really enjoyed having something to refer to while I was working and not worry so much about solving the problem of the illustration while I was making it so much as bringing it to fruition, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now I'm just going in and doing some more highlighting now that I've laid down more shadow so I can get that really good, good contrast and just boosting up the areas that I highlighted in acrylic and that didn't pop quite enough. For whatever reason, I did not have the ability to mix the really limey sort of highlight color that I wanted, like a pastel sort of mint, and using the pencils on top of white acrylic paint really got me that color that I wanted.
last step was just to add a little bit more definition to the line art in the hair and a few of the lines that are in the hair just to keep that illustrative sort of style. But then she was pretty much done. The lighting here is not doing any favors, so I'll be sure to give you some final images as well as the Passover at the end. And here's the finished piece. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing a behind the scenes look at my first attempt at acrylic washes and that you enjoyed seeing this piece come to life from the sketch to the final product. If you like her, I'll have prints available up on my Redbubble shop, as well as a still version that you can look at on my website. But until then, I will see you in the next one, all right? Bye! Voisin, voisine, désolé Si je trouble votre tranquillité quand je passe parmi vos maisons, pardonnez-moi cette intrusion. Le terrain était vague sans vous, et puis je vous ai vu débarquer, immobilisé dans la boue, vos caravanes bigarrées, affairées du matin au soir. Vous ne levez jamais la tête. Quand je... <rire> I gotta say, it's very irritating when I set up music to play and then it stops. I need another freaking cup. Do we have any more cups? Why would I? <laughs> and they ask me, why do you save so many cups from like restaurants in childhood? And I say, acrylic wash. That was a joke. I actually didn't know I was going to get into a public wash.